So this is a piece of dried red oak. It's been cut for two years now, exactly this month. I've been hanging on to it for a while. I took and took the 261 and slabbed this side of it off to where I wanted it to be to where it would make a full cut. And you'll see in a minute when I put the 572 up against it there to check it. Watch this video all the way through. I really dig into both these saws. I weigh both of them full of gas and oil. And I point out a lot of stuff between these two saws. And it's all the way through it, all the way to the end. So the cutting is on the front end of it and then all the differences is on the, on the back end of it. It's off to Hush Varner and Steel Bow. I mean, if you look at what these saws do today compared to what we were having to buy back in the 80s and even the early 90s, uh, between the, the smoothness of them and, and the way that they run, it's just incredible. I mean, you got fuel injection and then you got auto tune here. And I'm not sure who, who was fast or anything like that, but you really can't compare these two saws because, well, it's, it's hard to because there is no replacement for displacement. So you've got an 80cc saw or 79cc saw to a 71cc saw. That's crazy. So, and of course, you're looking at, you're looking at $1,400, $1,000. Thank goodness for competition. I'm going to film these videos that way you can take them and you can decide what to spend your money on. So I got a chain catch for the 500 here. I got it from the same place I got the dogs from uh, West Coast Saw online. I've never talked to them or anything. I've just ordered, I've ordered several things from them now. And uh, very cool. I've been very happy with the uh, with the dogs on there that I got. Do have a bark box for the 500. Uh, here, for those of y'all who wonder what a bark box is, there it is, right there. Uh, 
the screen it comes with a spark resistor screen in it I'm about to take it out in a little bit but here's what I wanted to show you I ordered these chain catches they're not like six bucks a piece the cool thing about this catch is is it bolts to the inside one right there and then when you put the side cover on this side sticks through there just like that so it's completely slap across that's cool and it's got a snap ring on it here's the actual catch right there the roller that goes on it so it'll be sitting in there like that so it's a complete bar all the way across i didn't realize you could get them when i got those right there all right so see the peg for the chain catch comes all the way through the outside dog look at that it goes all the way across that's cool as heck i've never had one that worked like that right there i like that a lot because it's got the full support because man when these chains come off these saws these pro saws they come off quick fast and then they hurry see here's the husky right here and i'll show you I hate to grab this thing like this, slice my hand open. See the difference? See, it does not go all the way across. So when the chain hits it there, it's not supported completely. Okay. So we're about to weigh these two saws and see what the tail tails so make sure you can see her in midair all right here we go so the 500 is 19 pounds 7 ounces still calls that a 25 inch bar that's the steel light bar that's the one that has the, uh, the insert in it that they mill out on one side but that bar still takes a 84 drive link chain, which is a uh, normal 24 inch bar. All right, so both saws are full of gas. The 500 holes, uh, I believe it is exactly two ounces more than the 572. All right, so 19 pounds, seven ounces, steel light bar. 20, they call it 25 inch, but it's actually gonna be 24. All right, let's set the Husky up. So you can see the Husky uh, is full of gas. Also, it's got a 24-inch Suji bar on it. That's a light bar also. Okay, here we go. 20 pounds, 7.9 ounces right there. So there you go, boys and girls. And... 19 7.2 that saw is over a pound lighter than this saw that is a 79 cc saw the 500 is and the 572 is a 71 cc saw a pound of difference in a chainsaw is a lot to some people some guys that run saws all the time you know a pound may not be no big deal to them but in my case a pound is a big deal because i'm not that big of a guy and that actually what determines the longevity of how long i can stand to run a saw that's the reason why a lot of times, I like I say, a 395 size saw, I can't run them very long. They're just, they're that heavy. And that's the reason why you'll see me in a lot of the videos, you'll see me knock the tree down with the 572. And then I immediately drop that 572 and grab the 550 and start running it to do the, the bucking up or the topping or anything like that. Sometimes I'll keep running the 572, but, but not that often. And then that's why that's why I keep those scales down here in my shop too, where I can uh, look at stuff like that. And I'm not going to say one saw is better than the other. I'm just pointing out some of the differences 
uh, between the between the two saws here. All right, the chains that I'm running, the Husqvarner has the Oregon LGX. Is what's on it. The steel has the steel RS chain on it. I have found that the RS chain is taking me a little bit to kind of figure out what that chain likes and to get it to cut like the feel that I want on it. It, it took me several times. So we're going to go over several things about these two saws, uh, some likes and dislikes that I like about, uh, about each one of them here. Uh, of course, the Husqvarner, the entire top cover just pops off with just undoing the latches. There's two on this side, one on that side over there. The steel, they did just steel a little bit different than the other steels. It's got a two-piece top cover on it, so to take the back cover off where the uh, air filter is, you just, all you do is untwist this right here, and you can do it by hand, and it comes off, or, uh, just slides right off. If you want to take this cover off, you got to have a screench or a screwdriver, stick it in there, twist a half or quarter turn, turn it, and then the rest of the cover pops off on it. One thing that I like about the steel, and all the steels, is their captive nuts. I like them better than the Husqvarner. They're actually made kind of in the side cover the way that they work. And uh, they don't interfere with your dogs at all. So you can put any dogs on it that you want, and you don't have to worry about the captive bar nuts having to lose them or anything like that see on the Husqvarner the 572 comes with captive nuts but when you put the large dogs on it you have to lose the captive nuts and go back to the regular nuts right there so this saw here does not have captive nuts on it anymore because the dog actually fits up underneath the nuts right there so when you take the nuts off it does have a screw right there that still holds the dog on there. So one difference about these two saws, and I'm not sure, I kind of like it on the steel, but I'm not sure the pluses and minuses on it. The chain tensioner on this one is not in the side cover, it's actually in the saw. So it may make it more difficult if you had to ever change it to swap. I've never had to change one, so I don't know. With it being in the saw right there on the Husky, the chain tensioner is actually in, in the side cover right here, so when you pull it off, um, the chain tensioner comes with it out here, and the bar is loose. So when you throw the bar back on the steel, you actually set it up on the chain tensioner, and then you slide the cover. You don't have to line the cover up on it. With this one here, you got to make sure you've got it, the tensioner right to where you can line up with the bar. Now, I like I said, I'm not sure which way I thought, Maybe I like that one better. I'm, I'm not sure uh, which one that I prefer as far as that goes. Uh, both have inboard clutches on, on each saw right there. So we're going to dig into the next thing that I like and a dislike. The like, I like the flip-up caps on the Husqvarna better than the steel they actually when you put the saw over you grab them and you got to unscrew them see and there and it comes loose see there's nothing in the in the feel right there at all of course put them back on there you got to screw them back down they do have a place for a screench to go in right there if you run into a problem the oil one is the same way works the same way I like those a lot. I do not like the ones on the steel. And here's why. You see you see the that's gas. I've already replaced this one one time. That's the reason why when I lay these saws down, I lay them on their side, see all the gas right there. So like I said, I've already put one brand new cap on it. These are quarter turns. You just turn them, they're locked right there. You turn on the right there, they're undone. And then you pull up on them and they come out. All right, you see all the garb 
on that O-ring right there. I think that's why that thing leaks like it does. And man, there's no way to keep that from happening. Because this is recessed. You see all the fines right there around it. So I am, I, I don't like these right here. I wish they were different than that. And the oil one will do the same way right there. So that's one thing that, or one of the things that I don't like about the steel and I really like about the Husqvarna. I wish the steel had the caps on it like the Husqvarna's got over there, similar to them. All right, next. We'll pull the cover off. Like I said, this is one piece cover. The cool, cool thing about that one is when you pull it off, you are looking at the jug and everything. So if you pull this one off, you still can't see the jug. Um, you have to take this cover off to get to the jug to see it. So there's a noticeable size difference between the two air filters on the, on the two machines right here and the steel being larger. There is one thing in this world that I'm not sure that steel is ever going to catch Husqvarna on, and that is the air filtration system. Now, Husqvarna has had a thing called air injection since back in the uh, early 90s. And the way that they route the air through the flywheel and, and everything, and the way that they've got it done, it pretty much cleans the air of most all the fines and all of the big stuff before it ever gets the air cleaner right there. Uh, and, but the steel here, if you want to see something that'll blow you away, go back and watch my live feed video uh, from Friday night. Not Friday night, Saturday night, this past Saturday night. And watch when I took this air filter off this saw and knock it out. I mean, there's actual wood chips will come out of this filter after just over a tank of gas. It's not like that with the Husqvarna. I'm not real happy with the air filtration system on this thing. All this thing does is just push on there, and that's it. I did last night uh, put a little slight layer of grease around it, and uh, I did notice on the inside there were some fines on the inside in there. I'm not real happy about that at all because it's just sitting on there and then this right here goes on and it's it's no it's nothing it's not pushing on it. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit more. This one right here is actually tightened down. The screw goes all the way through it into the barrel of the carburetor right there. So you gotta unscrew see it's still not undone yet. So you got to undo this, and it's loose now, and you pull it up. Okay, look, you see how it seals right there? You see there's a little bit of fines. I have not blowed this saw out or anything, so there's a little bit of fines right there. But they're not going beyond that. You see the throat, the intake, it's all clean. That's what I want right there. I want that. So, this is not cool here, because let's talk about this. This is a $1,400 saw before taxes. This is a $1,000 saw before taxes. So, say you buy this saw at a place where sales tax is 10%, well, you just add another $140 to the cost of it. So, then you got a $1,540 saw this one over here, you got $1,100 saw. You can find this saw sometimes, a lot of times, dealers for $800. So that puts the price difference, even the gap of it, even that much more. So the question I want to ask is, is did everybody get caught up in the hoopla because this is a fuel-injected saw and gave steel a pass on the price on this saw? Think about that. The saw is a pound lighter. It's got crazy throttle response, insane throttle response. I mean, well, let's not even joke about that. The throttle response on this saw is, is mind-boggling of what it'll do. But you've seen in the cuts what it would do compared to the 572. 
And did we give us one or, I mean, did we give Steele a pass on the price? Is Steele sitting back thinking, guys, should we have charged 1600 for this saw or 1800 because we can't, we're selling them that fast, you know? If you, the value of this saw and what it'll do, in my opinion, unless you're like me and you're dealing with neck and back issues day in and day out and you can stand to run, the weight doesn't bother you, this saw right here is a lot better value than this saw. Because, oh, by the way, you got to think about this. Where did they take the weight from this saw? If this saw holds two more ounces of gas than that saw, it also holds a little bit more oil than that saw, but it's over a pound lighter. Where did they take the weight out of this saw? Is the longevity of this saw been compromised compared to this saw? I do know that the bottom, this is a magnesium case on the Husqvarna's. I do know these saws are built like tanks. They got some mind-boggling uh, bearings in the bottom of them down there. Just crazy. And I've, run, I've been running this saw over two years now, and I've never done anything to it other than uh, put gas and oil in it, uh, knock the air filter out occasionally. I have, to, I have to knock this air filter out two or three times as much as I do that air filter right there. So, you know, that's the question that you got to ask because 14 that's 400 more dollars 400 more dollars in that saw right there that's a lot of money a lot of money now granted the saw does feel good that's the best feeling steel that i've ever ran right there it's in a it's in a complete different atmosphere than any other steel that that i've ran and i own three of them now i've got the 362 and then i've got the 261 over there also so since that making of the video, I have put a bark box on, on this saw. And I've ran it, done some time cuts on it. I couldn't tell a lot of difference on this saw with the bark box on it. Uh, now, I did put a bark box on the 362. Now, that saw right there is a completely different animal with the bark box on it. I could tell a dramatic difference with it on there. But anyway, we're talking about these two saws. I got sidetracked there for a little bit. But so that's my take on the saws the only drawback that i've got on the husqvarna is just the weight difference there between the between the two saws now if you put the organ bar on there the old style organ branded husqvarna bar which is this one right here uh you're gonna go way you're gonna not not let me rephrase you're not gonna go way up in weight but you're gonna go even more weight the the gap is gonna be even further between those two saws then it's gonna add more to the Husqvarna than the sugi puts on it so it all boils down to you know what you want to spend your money on and and so everybody wants to compare this saw to the 572 and it's not really a quote per se fair comparison because you're 79 cc 71 cc's hus warner is is going to have out the 90 cc saw here shortly and so that's what we're going to compare this all to right here then because people want to compare these two saws to one another all right so we're going to go the other way and we're going to compare this saw to the 90 cc husqvarna once they once they come out with it there'll be some whining over that and everything but i mean it is what it is everybody wants to compare these two together so let's go the other way let's compare this one to the 90 cc saw and see what uh see what goes on on that but uh both good saws can't knock that what's the longevity of that saw gonna be i don't know i've got a 372 over there that was built in year 2000 still crank it up run the hair off of it will this saw run that long i don't know 
I have no idea. I have no doubt that one over there will run that long, but I'm a huge fan of the auto tune stuff, the Mtronic stuff with steel, and also the fuel injection on this saw right here. The biggest thing about this saw in the fuel injection is the throttle response. The saw, if you're not holding on to it good, it will literally basically just about jump out of your hands if you don't have a good grip on it. It has that much throttle response and is that snappy when you hit the trigger on it compared to anything else that I've ever run. And the, the torque on it's really good. Still are predominantly known for torque and what they'll do. And the saw runs, it, it won't run, it's not going to run with a 395 size saw. It's not, it's not going to happen. That's just a, that saw as far as power wise is just a, a different animal. But the torque on this saw, it feels a lot like a, like a 395. You know, if people have run a 395, how they're really, really torquey. Uh, and so that's a cool thing. I want to, let me say this too before I end this video. All right, so these dogs, before anybody orders dogs, uh, these dogs come from West Coast Saws. Everything that I got from them has been top shelf stuff. These are the four spike dogs. The Husky has four spike. The 362 has four spike. The 261 has three spikes on it. If you're going to order spikes, get the three spikes. Ah! About to slice my hand open right there. Bad gummit. I didn't know. I got close. Look at that spike. That spike is in line with that chain on the bottom. So if you're born and you're cutting and you're trying to make your hinge, you can't tell where your bar is, but all you got to do is look at that spike right there. And that's an indicator. They designed that. West Coast Saws designed that to where that spike would line up right there. So if you're going to buy spikes, buy the three. Don't buy the four. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to order a set of three spikes for the 500. And because see, it don't line up with it. It's a little bit, you know, it's above it, which I mean, you can adjust for that. That's not a problem. But I think that's just cool. I like stuff like that. Stuff like that's what, uh, what kind of cranks my tractor per se. So I wanted to put that in there uh, too. Y'all, I have went out on a major limb doing what I've done. I have not jumped ship from Husqvarna. And I may not end up getting anything else from them. Uh, you know, who knows what the future holds. I wanted to run some steel stuff because I didn't want people to look at me as being just a pro, pro, for Husqvarna man or anything like that. I wanted to, to put this stuff out here to where uh, I could put my likes and dislikes on them. And then, let's face it, this day and time, man, the COVID stuff, 2020 sucks so bad. So many people, the, their money that you got that you're going to spend, you got to make it go as far as it'll go. And so you, you want to get the most value for your dollar. So I have went out on a limb for y'all, for everybody, to run these saws here and not hold back on them. And then that way you can watch my video, watch this video, and you can decide, okay, I am going to spend the 1400 plus tax to buy this saw, and I'm going to, or I'll, I'm going to go with this saw here for a thousand. Some people say, well, the price is going to come down on this right here. Well, now listen, this still has to be very careful on that right there. Because think about the thousands of people. You can get it a little, some dealers, yeah, I've seen them sell it for a little less than 1400 But think about the thousands of people that paid the 1400 plus tax, how pissed off they would be all of a sudden still drop this saw down to $1,100. That, that, would be, that would be a kick in the balls from steel right there, and that would, be, that would be bad if they did something like that right there. And I don't think that they would. I, I, I really don't see them doing that. I think that price is what it's going to be. Because about the only time you see prices on the things very like on the 572 is like 
when they're having a show like Northport Power Equipment or, or something like that. But if you stayed in here and watched this whole video, I appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions, I ask down below. I'll try to keep up with the comments. I get so many comments in now. It's kind of a little bit hard to keep up with everything that, that goes on sometimes now. But um, there you go. Oh, let me say this too. The 500 burns a lot of gas. There's a reason they put a two ounce bigger gas tank on it. It it burns the the it, even the three the, all the steels that I've got comparably burn more gas than the uh, than Husqvarna's do. Uh, it's you if you run one of these right here and you're cutting with it and you're running the hair off of it, be ready to put some gas in it because you finna put some gas in it. And of course, you know you got a bigger motor, but I mean it's it's gonna it's gonna pull some gas i mean it goes through it pretty quick so uh i'm gonna end this video appreciate all y'all watching and you know if there's something you want me to see me review uh mention it down below and if it makes pretty good sense for me to try to do it i will uh, i'll probably i'll go ahead and say right now i won't be buying a 462 i i don't i've run one of them i know what they're about and I know the feel of them, the weight of them is very comparable to this right here. 661, they're close to three pounds heavier than the 462 and the 500 is right here. I doubt I ever get one of them. If I was going to buy another steel, it would be a, like a 661 or, you know, something like that. And, uh, but I, uh, I doubt that I do. Uh, I am going to buy me another 550 i just i want another one and i'm gonna get a 562 also i want a 562 to go with my posse of saws that i got so i've been trying to end this video for like five minutes but i appreciate y'all watching hanging in here with me on this and uh we'll catch y'all later later taters